Dale Earnhardt Jr. has, has joined us now, and Dale drives the number 88 Diet Mountain Dew National Guard Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Currently third in points. He's got one win on the season, and uh, with three races to go, Dale, before the chase, uh, certainly you would uh, like to uh, notch another victory, I'm sure. Yeah, we would uh, We'd love to get a victory this weekend. Um, I love, you know, this style of racing and, and short track racing in general, and look forward to coming to Bristol every trip, especially, uh, you know, with the changes. Uh, looking forward to seeing what kind of racetrack we got and what, what kind of things you can, uh, you know, what kind of things the changes might bring about that you can use to your advantage or that might suit your driving style, possibly. So, uh, you know, just kind of ready to get in the car, ready to practice, ready to work a little bit today and see what kind of car we got. And uh, look, you know, look forward to a tough race tomorrow that uh, hopefully we'll come out on top. Questions now, we'll start with Marty. Go ahead, Marty, and then we'll go to uh, Mike. Work our way over here. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Monty. Monty Dutton, yes, is it? I guess that in a sense, nobody has an average upbringing because I mean, obviously, on the one hand, you had a very famous father. On the other hand, I don't think you were privileged. I think he took a lot of, put a lot of effort in keeping you whittled down to size, so to speak. But do you think it's more difficult? I mean, is it more difficult to grow up in the public eye? Is it more, I'm not talking about is it more difficult to grow up. I'm talking about is the process of maturity more difficult? Because, you know, you don't, you have, there are things that, that aren't normal and never will be. Yeah, definitely. I think um, in that certain situation you're you can be slow to mature and uh i definitely wasn't uh i definitely haven't acted my age yet so uh you know i i can't mature as fast as i'm getting old so it uh and i think that the lifestyle and just you know you're around the racetrack i was around the racetrack really didn't have a whole lot of adult supervision you know once we got here i could kind of scoot out from under daddy's wing and do whatever we wanted run around the track and goof off and have fun and spent years and years de doing that and so it definitely uh uh you know is diff you know you might uh not be quite as mature as uh certain individuals in certain situations growing up around the racetrack let's go viv and we'll go over to jim noble lee and dustin Viv Bernstein, New York Times. As a team owner, would you ever hire a driver who had failed a drug test? And do you think you would ever be able to sell that to a sponsor? Well, I think it'd be difficult uh, to uh, convince certain people, whether it be sponsors or, or, or just any individuals. Uh, some people are always going to be skeptics when, when, you, uh, when you have a failed drug test. Uh, but I believe in second chances, and uh, if I felt a guy was talented and felt he could help my race team and can be competitive, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any problem with hiring him. If I felt like that, uh, you know, I would want to uh, understand the rehabilitation process and want to feel good about his his current state. But uh, yeah, if I felt like he could help my team, I wouldn't have any problem hiring him. Over here to Jim Noble. Go ahead, Jim. Jim Noble, ESPN. You know Brad Keselowski better than most, most because he drove for you in the Nationwide Series. Is Brad a guy who likes to play mind games a little bit with some of the stuff he's had to say about Hen Hendrick and the rear end suspensions lately? Is that effective in your mind? No, not really. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I do know Brad pretty well. Brad's a really good guy. Uh, he has a pretty good heart, and uh, he's a really great race car driver. And I wish he'd concentrate on that. I think um, he likes to talk a lot, but I think his his true skill you know his true skills shine on the racetrack, not really behind the microphone. Okay, let's go with uh, Lee. We'll go with Mike, and then to Dustin. Go ahead. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. 
Um, two questions for you. I, I want you to kind of tell us about what happened with your high school visit um, mm -hmm. here in Bristol and, and, you know, how you thought that went. Also, we talked to Rusty Wallace last night and kind of, you know, what Noble was asking you about Keselowski. Rusty said that between himself and your father, some of the drama that they created, you know, whether it was for, for show or, or just as a result of what happened on the racetrack, was good for the sport. And, and you know, that kind of disagrees with what you said about Brad. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, people say things just kind of get things rolling or, you know, spark kind of drama that, that brings attention to the sport. But yeah. um, we don't have as much as that here as we used to back in, you know, the heyday. Can you kind of just talk about that and then talk about your high school visit, please? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with Rusty. I just, me and Brad are friends. I don't want any drama with Brad. And uh, I don't, I don't like, particularly like the things he says lately about the company I drive for. So I take offense to the, the claims and the accusations. So it's just natural for me to do that. I, um, but we're friends, and I don't want any drama between him. So that's where I stand with that. But, yeah, I, I mean, certain... Uh, certain individuals and personalities, when they clash, um, it's great. Uh, it makes great TV, and uh, and it's done. There's there's been a lot of great rivalries in this sport that have that have moved it along and, and taken it to certain levels. And I don't I don't I don't dislike that or disagree with it. Um, uh, as far as the high school visit, uh, it went good. You know, it's pretty uh, inter intimidating to get in front of 1,400 kids and trying to talk. Kids are the toughest critics in this world. and uh, But it's a good experience for me. I hope it's a good experience for them. And But, it, but I enjoy it. I enjoy um, – we don't really have – we don't – I don't really – know a better opportunity to connect to that demographic than, than actually getting down there on the on the gym floor and talking to them myself. So I hope that uh, we made some new fans and strengthened some, some relationship with some old fans. So uh, I enjoyed it all the way around, though. I look forward to, the, to doing more of that in the future. Let's go with Mike over here from Richmond, Marty Smith, Claire B. Lang, and then Dustin. Uh, hey, Dale. Uh, quick question on uh, just around the shop. Is it a different vibe? Is it more fun uh, this year with the success you're having? And can you put your finger on two or three main reasons for the, the success you're enjoying right now? Well, I've said it before, uh, and I'll say it again. Uh, Steve Latart's the main reason. Uh, he, the, you know, he puts uh, the, all, the, all, the, all the reasons we run good kind of reference to him. You know, he puts a good team around me, a lot of good guys there working together, working as a group, uh, everybody pulling in the same direction. That that uh, is a result of his doing. Um, he's been able to help me as a driver evolve into a better race car driver, a more productive driver, a driver that uh, can assist him and give him opportunity to help me and get the car fixed. Uh, so I mean, he, I, I give him all the credit. I mean, it's uh, I keep saying it all all the time, but it's that's uh, the only true answer I know. To be able to give you a a good answer would be able to tell you the truth, and that's it. So Marty, Marty, Dustin, and Claire. Marty Smith, ESPN. Okay, so you and Jeff got no issue. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but why do you think that it happened? First of all, and second. Uh, do you think that the crux of his frustration was more driven in your conversations with him? Do you think it was more driven by the fact that it was you as a teammate or because he's trying his tail end off to have a shot to win a championship? Um, I, I mean, it's a bunch of that stuff, I think. Uh, it's hard to say which one's driving, you know, driving it more. I, I You know, I, I hate to get in. I don't want to pretend that I know – what's going on in anybody's head much less Jeff's but uh, you know he I think when you I, I've had I've raced with teammates for for years and there's times when you know there's a lot of guys on the racetrack but every once in a while you're going to have to battle your teammate and I've had to do that before and sometimes you don't like the way that battle works out or or the way they might have raced or whatever and you got you know I it's hard at the moment 
it's hard at the time to understand that they are out there working for their car, for their crew chief, for all the guys on their on their uh, uh, you know on their team, on their crew. Um, when we used to uh, we used to have a really tough. I used to have a hard time when me and Michael would race on the stricter plates because we always worked together, and it was sometimes it would come down to having to make a decision of going for the win or trying to help your teammate win. And there were times when I know Michael sacrificed races or wins to help me win. Uh, at least it felt that way. And there, I was put in the same situation a couple times to, you know, on a, la on a late restart, whether I needed to push him or, or try to go for the win. And I would ask, you know, my team would always tell me to go for the win. Uh, but I felt conflicted because of, you know, what I felt Michael had done for me in the past. So, you know, there's – and and – I know that through those experiences, for first and first off, my team wants me to race hard. Uh, I got all them guys putting them cars together and going and traveling, being away from families, all that stuff, to see me go as hard as I can go. And uh, you know, you try to take care of people. I, I try not to put people in tough situations or compromising situations. I try not to wreck the field or or you know cause accidents. Uh, but you got to go hard. You got a whole team wanting you to go hard. We wanted to try to win the race, and I was doing everything I could, every lap, every restart, to try to put myself in position to do that. And uh, you know, sometimes it's you're going to be racing teammates in those situations, and sometimes you're not going to feel good about being on either end of it. You know, so you know, I I, I respect the hell out of Jeff. He's I know exactly what he's done for this sport. And I know what that means to this sport. And I know what it means to the company I drive for. I know he's got, you know, seniority and and I I totally get all that and uh, you know, I try to be an asset to his program as as much as I can. Uh, and I know it doesn't look like it at times, but you know, when we're out on the racetrack, we got to run hard and you know, I try not to you know, do anything foolish, but you got to go. You know, and I felt like I was just doing what I was supposed to be doing. But I know he, you know, it was frustrating for him, and I can understand that. I've been on the end of that, and I, I don't fault him for being upset if he was, if he thought I did something wrong or didn't like the way I raced him. I don't fault him for that at all because I've been in that situation too, and I know what, I know what that feels like. But Dustin, <clears throat> let's go, Dustin, Claire, and then uh, if we have time, we'll get David. We may have to close it off. Dustin Long, USA Today. Dale, um, whether it's on or off the track, what is something that's rubbed off from Steve to you, and what do you feel like maybe something that is rubbed off from you to Steve? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> um, well, Steve's, uh, Steve's personality and being positive all the time has rubbed off on me. I used – I um, – I tend not to worry as much uh, about my car and how it's going to do in practice or how it's going to do in qualifying. And, and I used to really let that stuff kind of eat at me at times when things just weren't looking right or feeling right or feeling comfortable. Um, but he's he's helped me be more positive, which tends to lend itself to confidence. And uh, confidence has, has been a big struggle for me trying to rebuild over the years. And he's helped me get, get there get more confident and feel better about myself as a driver. Um, so probably just his personality, uh, being positive all the time, I think it's made me similar. But I, I really don't know. I, I think um, I'm, maybe I re he's learned to relax a little bit. He's He was, when I first started working with him, he's pretty uptight, and I think that uh, I tend to tone it down uh, and 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 maybe he's he's I don't know I'm just guessing <laughs> maybe he's learned to relax a little bit and not be such a not be kind of so strung out and on the chip all the time he he tends to uh, yeah not get so re revved up it, when we're, I'm just speaking you know when when we're in the holler and working together and stuff we we tend to to cruise through the you know the process of working on the car and talking about the car and when we're deciding what we're going to do Saturday night before the race, if we're going to make any changes, that process has gotten a lot more calm and, and constructive. Claire? Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Specifically on this track, Dale, what, what do you think that you are 
you know, you've learned about this track, and what do you think you still have to work on? Uh, it, it's so fascinating to watch people get better and better at this track. Where do you think you're at, and what can you describe about what you think you really want to focus on? Yeah, one of the toughest things for me, this place is real similar uh, to Homestead in the way that the banking, some banking, some progressive banking is in steps where, for example, at, uh, at certain tracks, you know, the, you know, they'll pave a, they'll pave some uh, asphalt and it'll be, you know, X amount of wide. And then the next paving seam or, or strip of pavement will be banked more. So it pay, it, you know, progresses in steps. Well, this place is uh, dished like a bowl. It's not really, uh, it doesn't progress in, in chunks. It kind of just dishes and that, the way you enter the corner and the way the car loads the right front spring and, and, and uh, the, you know, the driver controls how the car can roll the center of the corner. It's a bit of a challenge for me in the way the track dishes. And this place is real similar to Homestead in that manner. So uh, that's one of the things that I still feel like I haven't got quite a good grip on. Um, and I'm still kind of working on the, finding the right feel for the car to be able to, to roll the center better and, and make good speed, have a good competitive car. We've been able to, I've been able to find a way to get a car that I can run fifth with, but I haven't really, ever since we've reconfigured this place, I've sort of, I'm missing that next, next step that we used to be able to find here. We used to really, you know, have some good speed here with the old configuration and just rolling into the corner and as the banking sort of dishes up and the load increases real steady into that right front, I, I, said, I tend to maybe drive the car too straight and have trouble rolling the center as well as I need to. Final question, David. Let's get him a mic if we can, please. David Caravello, final question. In, in light of this rear end suspension situation, how common or uncommon is it that one team finds something that leaves everybody else sort of suspicious until they get kind of an okay that it's all right to adapt it? Is this, is this rare or not? No, it happens, uh, you, know, I, you know, teams find speed, whether it be, you know, when, the, when, when guys brought in the bump stops. Uh, I remember going to New Hampshire and Jeff Bedine running in the top five with that number 60 car that uh, I forget who owned it, Joe Bessie. And uh, how people were learning to, how to use the bump stops and certain teams picked that up quicker than others. And then when we started uh, skewing the rear end housings and you saw uh, the Penske cars going down the straightaway sideways, uh, I remember watching uh, the 77 at the at the at the open not during All Star Weekend, it looked like it had a half inch, of, you know, toe in the rear tires, and uh, it was just incredible that seeing that, you know, that that we we would all go to these links to to find speed. Uh, when cars started first coil binding springs, I mean, you know, some teams had that figured out and understood what that meant and how to get it working and how to change the, the buckets in the lower A frames and and get this get the coil bind to work evenly all the way around the spring. You know, it's just certain teams, and that happens, The you know, the real big innovations such as, like, you know, bump stops and, and coal binding springs and rear toe and things, that happens once every, I don't know, four years or something, where something, you know, real big comes in that, in a, you know, changes the sport quite a bit, and everybody sort of, you know, eventually gets on the wagon, and then, it, then everybody has to find another area to work in. But there's all kinds of little things, uh, that that happen all year long, you know, little tiny things that are just small pieces of speed uh, that teams do, and it could be even in engines and all kinds of things. But that happens all year long. There's all, I mean, every week, somebody's got an idea. You know, that's what's that's what's supposed to happen, anyways. You got all these guys pay to be innovative and engineers and stuff. So hopefully, every week somebody's got an idea that needs to be needs to be tried somewhere. But. Uh, and it's, you know, I think it's good. It's good for the sport. We need some, we, we can't all, we can't be crushed into this box where all thir 43 cars run the exact same lap time because we'll just be single file running around the racetrack. But, you know, some teams, you know, the, the bigger teams seem to have the bigger, the, the bigger, uh, you know, engineering departments and have better, more success and, ability to study and science out stuff like this. Dale, yeah. thanks for coming in. Sorry we All couldn't right. get there, buddy. Dale, good luck this weekend.